defending their young is a force to be reckoned with. That's enough for the Terrapin. There must be an easier meal to be had somewhere in this great lake. But this is clearly not the Terrapin's day. The otters are still about and always on the lookout for some fun. But they soon tire of their reluctant playmate. Finally, the Terrapin's luck has turned. It's found a dead emperor, but even dead, it proves too much to handle. And there will be no second chance at it. An osprey spotted the emperor from on high but the fish is so heavy that the hawk cannot get airborne with his prize, so it simply swims to high ground. A lost opportunity and a found feast. The ability to take advantage of such chance opportunities is a key to evolutionary success. This little snail presents cichlids with just such an opportunity, but only after the snail itself has died. Their shells can occur in the millions, covering acres of lake bed. As many as 20 tiny cichlids have evolved to fit into the shells, using them as both a refuge from predators and a spawning site. This cichlid is courting. The females of his kind are small enough to fit inside the shells, but the male is far too large. All he can do is squirt his sperm into the entrance. The female will raise her brood in the safety of her shell, while the male must cope with the dangerous world outside. But there is a definite advantage to being so big. He picks up shells to pick up females. Passing females are escorted by the male to his collection of shells. He shows off the accommodations, inviting her to move in. The more shells he has, the more females he can house in his harem. But building a harem from scratch is tiring and time-consuming. It's easier to raid those nearby plundering shells, and kidnapping females.
For the many different cichlids who evolved into miniatures, these shells provide a haven. But just occasionally, they can become traps. The water cobra has evolved here in Tanganyika alongside the cichlids. And for the first year of its life, it is small enough to get inside the shells. Already, its venom is as potent as an adult's. One bite could kill a human. Millions of years ago, the cobra left the land to hunt in the lake and now feeds almost entirely on fish. Water cobras are not the most serious threat to this cichlid's harem. He is surrounded, but not by his females. They're tucked inside their shells. His harem is being raided by midget males. While the harem master evolved into a giant, some males of the same species stay tiny and mimic the females. These transvestite dwarves, too puny to collect shells themselves, try to sneak a mating where they can. Ganging together increases their chances. They're so small, they can fit inside the shells and mate the females undisturbed. The success of their raids bonds the tiny males to each other, and the gang turns their mob tactics to another pressing concern, filling their bellies. The young of whole nesting cichlids are ideal prey for the mob. Parents will fight to protect their young, but the sheer number of raiders can easily overwhelm them. As the mob approaches a colony of whole nesters, the vigilant parents flash their fins, signaling their brood to retreat to the deepest part of their nest. In the middle of the colony, defending parents from all sides keep the raiders on the move. All the mob can do is hit and run. But nests at the edge of the colony are at serious risk. A whole brood can be devoured in a matter of seconds. A parent's valiant defense of its young is not really what you expect from a fish. But cichlids feel the bonds of family strongly. <laughs> 